Salam alaikum and welcome to another episode of Karbala Reflections. Throughout these holy days of Muharram, I think all of us have been trying to contemplate on the characteristics our holy Imam held, as well as his companions and his family. As well as contemplating on them, we've been trying to relate to them and to see how we can try to become more like them. What better way to do this than analyze specific characteristics that we wish we had within ourselves? Today, I'm joined by Sister Amina and Sister Sara to discuss this ever-growing topic. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum alaikum. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I wanted to hear your views about the main characteristics that stood out to you um, from the events of Karbala and Ashura, from our Imam alayhi salam, as well as his family. Well, there's so many to choose from, but I think what moves me personally is, first of all, the love that Imam Hussein salam, had for people that motivated himself to go towards Iraq uh, in the beginning, uh, especially knowing that he and his family are likely to be killed and their survivors to be taken captive, uh, to reach out to people along the way. Uh, not to try to force anyone to stand with him, indeed to encourage people to go. Uh, And I think one of the reasons that someone like him suffers so much, of course anyone's going to suffer if they're in his position, but the the more your soul is developed and the more your capacity to love, then the greater your capacity is to experience pain and to be hurt. And yet that did not interfere with his faith, which is basically the other characteristic that particularly stands out to me, his uh, continued trust in Allah. And again, the love of Allah, remembrance of Allah uh, up until his very last breath. Uh, And you have some of the dhikr of the imam and the prayers of the imam, which have been passed on to us. Uh, Even it's said, and Allah knows best, but it's said that he was asked before he went out to battle, um, The women were asking, how will we know if you are martyred? And he said, because while I'm alive, you'll hear me uh, remembering Allah uh, aloud. And so those two characteristics, uh, spirituality and love, I I think they're found in any true spiritual leader. And in English, as we'd say, man of God or or woman of God. Uh, Definitely, they're things I have uh, personally um, a lot of room to grow in uh, and a lot of uh, aspirations to aspire to. They're, they're, They're up there. But they're also universally acknowledged and appreciated characteristics, too, of what it means to be a true and perfected human being. Of course, there's many more. Yeah. Um, For me, I think personally, just um, seeing seeing how bravery has been interwined uh, with faith stood out to me. Because I've always found bravery as something that people think someone is either brave or you're not but over the years i've come to think that actually it's related to your faith and your faith perhaps is what makes you brave or not brave in certain situations i'm sure no one would like to find themselves in a situation where you know that you know your six month old baby is going to get slaughtered however that bravery came from the faith that Imam Hussein had, that Allah knew best, that everything was happening for a reason. And that personally for me is something that I'm aspiring to every single day. Yeah, I think for me that's the, that's the main one. What about you? I think it's phenomenal. I think both the points you've mentioned are so beautiful because it's something that you can so relate to in your almost your everyday life. Because I think as human beings, it's our innate nature. Like inherently everything is intertwined. You're Lack of gratitude, for example, can lead to a lack of perspective where you think tests or suffering are actually some way of God punishing you rather than bringing you closer to him. It's not natural for a human being always to understand what they're going through when they're going through it. But the level of certainty and foresight I think these people had, it's what, like you said, it carried them through in a way that they perhaps, they had this, you know, just yakin in their hearts that they were doing the right thing and they were going with the right vision. And I think it's so easy to be short-sighted. It's so easy to not even have a vision. It's so easy to get so lost and caught up in a moment that you start wondering, like, where is God in all this? You know, and I think it's something which happens a lot. You see it on social media. You see 
um, our youth struggling. You see, I mean, I say our youth, but it's all, it's everybody, you know, and this, um, this ability to see nothing but beauty, like Sayyida Zainab says, yes. I mean, you think about the psychological process that goes behind saying those words, and in a moment, like the moment that she did, you think, where has this human being come from? She, you know, sometimes people say things like, you know, the imams are unattainable, their level is unattainable, their perfection is something that we will never compare to. But Sayyida Zainab, I mean, she is the daughter of who she was. She's a granddaughter of who she was, but she had this, this uh, energy about the way that she says these words with so much conviction that challenges anybody, human, any human being listening to her to think, would I really be able to do what she did? Would I really be able to, even in situations that I'm facing in my life, to be able to turn around and say, yeah, actually, I see the goodness in this. And I think a big part of seeing that goodness is knowing that you don't know the entire picture. You don't always know what that goodness is in the moment. Maybe, like you said, like one month down the line, you'll know it. Or one year down the line, or 10 years, or maybe never, maybe actually. Maybe never. Maybe that is what God's testing you with. But to keep centering yourself back on that, this idea that everything is happening for your best and everything you're going through is happening for a reason and your sufferings aren't unseen. You know, like Imam Hussein says that everything is more bearable for me because you are watching me, you know? And the, the words of poetry that he recites to Allah when he's on his, you know, I don't even want to say deathbed, when he's on the floor in Karbala. So these things are, it's very powerful to even take one of these things and really dissect it to the level it deserves to be dissected. Something that we couldn't, you know, it's something that we can strive to do. But I think it's such a university of knowledge that it's so hard to encompass this one thing and say this, this thing inspires me on such a you know superficial level. Yeah, I think I think your point is you you said it very well. I I do agree that I believe every one of these characteristics that our Imam or other members of the Holy Household held deserves a whole mm. maybe years even to understand the intensity and the the deep level of faith that was behind it. But sadly, we don't have time for that, um, at least in today's episode. Hopefully we will down the line. So we're going to have to speak about more general um, characteristics, but I would love to um, dissect these characteristics, yeah. like you said. Um, I think that level of um, the ignorance I'm referring to is also an awe when it's like an equivalent to a feeling of awe that you have, yes. just knowing what you don't know about these personalities, For what sure. you don't know about what happened, you know? And I think it's just, um, again, I think perspective has a lot. This one thing that I'm really trying to take this year for myself in Maharam is just the idea of perspective. That I think every single year you have this holy month come and people will say, oh, it's a rhetoric, you know, we're hearing it's the same thing. We're hearing the same thing that what, what's changing on the pulpits. But actually, the thing is that we change. We are on the spiritual journey ourselves. We're going, we're evolving ourselves, either towards Allah or far, further away from that path. And I think that the various points that we're at in our own life, whether you are at that point of motherhood or you're at that point of being a young girl or your child is a young girl or you are a young son to an elderly father, or whatever the relationship is, I think God created this entire the circumstances of this day in such a way that was meant to teach us at whatever point that we are at in our life. And I think that's a miracle of it. It's just thinking that we can never know enough. We can never um, dissect enough. We can never understand enough, you know. But it comes down to our own commitment to trying to relate. I, I, I like your point. And I think um, what you said about uh, the Muharram Majalis being a bit repetitive, mm -hmm. maybe it's that, maybe we are also to blame in the sense that we might be looking at it through a repetitive lens perhaps that same topic if we tried as an individual for me personally if i tried to approach that topic in a different way maybe i would understand more than more from it instead of just being like oh you know i've heard this before not going to listen anymore the same way that we can dissect these characteristics so very deeply i think it goes with everything in islam it's it's so deep and so meaningful and so complicated every single ruling, fatwa, ayah, um, hadith, that um, I do think the more you go into it, the more you understand what Sayyida Zainab said when she said that she sees nothing but beauty even in a time of um, such an atrocity. Um, I think the issue is not being 
repetitive. Allah repeats. Surah Ar-Rahman has a lot of repetition in it. And yet, anyone who listens to it or reads it will say this adds to the beauty of it. You see, for example, some tile mosaics, they repeat. Uh, repetition is something that appeals to the human being, in fact, uh, in many ways. Uh, we generally don't get tired of listening to the events that took place on Ashura. We just say essentially the same thing every year. If we're starting to add in things, there's probably a problem because they're coming from somewhere else. But you know, in general, it's not the repetition that bothers us. We, in fact, oftentimes look forward to hearing about um, what happened because we do connect emotionally. Definitely. I think the main thing is that remembering Imam Hussein peace be upon him and especially the first 10 days of the month of Muharram should enliven the heart especially in this day and age in many places we live in places that I believe are a bit spiritually deadening for a lot of reasons we don't need to get into why this has happened in modernity in a lot of places uh, I think especially areas where um, you know bigger cities where people don't have roots and so forth yeah. uh, there's something about the lifestyle we leave that lead that doesn't always nourish the spirit of course it varies from place to place I'm not saying it's like that but this is a time that people look to to awaken their souls so I think that what we look to is to hear things that speak to us directly as they say what comes from the heart uh, reaches the heart uh, and those things whether they are repeated or whether they are new are things that are going to uplift and inspire people and, and I do think one of the jobs essentially of anyone who is um, basically preaching religion so to speak is to enlighten uplift and inspire in, inshallah yeah to well, make a, a movement in, in the human soul, so to speak. Yeah. Definitely going back to the character, the characteristics of Imam Hussein, most of them do leave me feeling very inspired mm -hmm. and um, very motivated to better myself. And like you said, um, many do say that it's unattainable to reach um, his level. However, that's, in my opinion, not always a negative thing. Mm -hmm. The fact that we're doing the very first step by by looking at those characteristics and wanting to have them within ourselves. Yeah. That's improving ourselves, mm -hmm. and that's ultimately what we're trying to do, right? So, seeing something, and it doesn't necessarily always have to be an Imam Hussein. Islam encourages us to do that with everyone around us. When you see something good in someone, try to learn from that. When you see something bad in someone, try to keep that away from you, try to learn from that and um, not not um, not develop it within mm -hmm. yourself. One of the things to keep in mind is that one of the side effects of modernity and scientific materialism is we tend to see things as being very linear. Uh, how much close to a to Imam Hussein? Is it 50%, mm. 90%, 5%? That's not the reality of the human being. We are all very complex and very multi-layered. Uh, and even infallibility itself has a lot of different components. I mean, if you look through the hadith, you do find hadith about various forms of infallibility individuals can have. Uh, for instance, if you've never drank alcohol or you're not somewhere where you can access it, you're infallible with respect to it because it has no hold on you. You have no interest in it or no access to it. Uh, now, of course, that's one level. The asma of Ahl al is a bit different. But nonetheless, the point is, um, there are levels and degrees, and there are also ways to progress very fast. And one way is, as you mentioned, which is good, incidentally, to, to try to build characteristics step by step. And we are advised uh, in Hadith, for example, to make certain characteristics, characteristics a habit, or even, as you know, if we don't have them, to pretend we have them, you know, fake it to you until you make it and all. Uh, but on the other hand, there are other mechanisms within the human being that can make someone progress very quickly. Uh, and this, again, is part of the value of remembering Imam Hussein, peace be upon him, emotionally. Because when you have that emotional connection and that spiritual connection, uh, that can transform mm -hmm. someone in a very nonlinear way, so to speak, uh, and even inspire them to give their life, as some people did on the day of Ashura. They defected and joined the side of Imam Hussein, peace be upon him. Um, so, basically... Um, I don't think it's always a virtue to look at at what level are we are compared to the Imam, but rather we, we understand that one can be pulled towards uh, what the Imam stood for and is inviting people to. 
And, and it's narrated from the Holy Prophet وسلم, that when, when someone is pulled forward to this position before Allah, you know, that the hadith people would interpret it differently, but what is narrated is this person becomes the hand of Allah, the eye of Allah, when they speak it is from Allah, etc. Now, of course, many people deviate, they think they have this position of Allah, they become weird and do weird things, but nonetheless, the point is, Allah has left this door open, and if you want to debate what level people can get to, that, that becomes to some degree an academic and theoretical debate, and, and some things are better left to practice, let them go, and Allah knows where everyone is, and we will see it in Jannah, where everyone is. Well, inshallah, you'll see Jannah, we'll see the people inshallah. in Jannah. Yeah. <laughs> inshallah. Yeah. Um, I think also there's, um, in light of this, this conversation, I think, also the attendance of majalis, I think that's also something that it's very easy to question. And I think in light of these characteristics, for example, we can sit here for like, you know, a couple of hours and speaking about these conversations. And I know that when I leave here, for example, I'm gonna feel far more uplifted than I will sure. sat outside, for example, on Oxford Street doing a nice little shop, you know? There's, um, I mean, that has its benefits too. But I'm saying like in terms of this situation right now, these um, gatherings, I think when you mention the name of Ahl Bayt Laysan, like they say, you mention the tragedy of Imam Hussein, you shed a tear, even like you're saying, if you find it difficult to cry and that's something that you, you try to do for the sake of, you know, you know that it makes Allah happy that you're remembering the people that he sent as saints and examples to us. I think there's so much barakah that, that exists in these places because yeah, yeah. you're connecting to something that is, is like you're saying, like not just of this world. Imam Hussein isn't of this world. He's not a human being that just happened to exist. You know, he's a he's a light that came as a guidance. Like I say, the the ark of salvation, and whoever embarks on that ark is going to be saved. And I think a huge part of that is the effort and the commitment to revive and every year revive because Allah knows our fitra better than any. Obviously, anyone can ever know is the, is the creator. And I think he knows that we end up in those states of forgetfulness. He knows that we have these times where we dip and we go up and we, we go up and down with our spirituality, up and down with our prayers, up and down with, you know, so many things. And I think this uh, barakah of having these, these kind of conversations, these, um, the presence of being in places where their remembrance is there, I think automatically without realizing it's like a child when you put them in front of a TV and they're like oh like you know they start wanting to be like the Teletubbies for example like whatever it is they're watching they'll start repeating phrases and I think human beings we're so similar like we sit in places we get influenced and then we start reflecting things without possibly without realizing sometimes subconsciously sometimes consciously and I think the blessing of being able to hear the moral traits hear things like the forgiveness towards her the um, the humanness of Imam Hussein on that day, of feeling the pain of taking the arrow out of his son's chest, for example. It's something that, that humanness, that pain, that vulnerability, and finding the beauty in that actively. It's like 10 days of actively trying to purify yourself to get some sort of grasp on things which perhaps every other day of the year, 355 days of the year, you're not even hearing. Sometimes perhaps people are like isolated and their environments, isolated in university environments, gone to other sides of the country, they've lost their family members, they're alone, you know, like a lot of people have struggles which are beyond our own imagination. And I think that revival, that warmth of the heart, that presence that you feel, no matter where you are in this life, and knowing that you have that thing to go back to, it's such a, it's a blessing in its own right. I, I agree with your points, um, and I think you phrased it very well. Um, personally, I find Imam Hussein and the Ahlul Bayt's message so inspiring not only because of the events that took place at that certain time but just as a message that's so universal that applies to me maybe on a smaller scale definitely on a smaller scale but applies to my day-to-day -day life regardless of what country i live in and regardless of how many years have passed um, since the events of ashura Yes, I, I completely agree. Uh, I think we do take a lot of inspiration from our lives, from people like Imam Hussein and Islam, if, if we do look to them. I think one of the challenges that we don't always admit to, I don't want to say this necessarily distinguishes the Shi from the Sunni consciousness, but, but there may be a slight difference here too, is that when I look at the struggles that people like Hazrat Fatima or Imam Ali or Imam Hussein went through, a lot of these struggles had to deal with other Muslims and other Muslims who misrepresented Islam or who were not acting in accordance with what the creator of the universe willed and willed for his beloved Prophet to 
teach. And I think especially sometimes those, those can be some of the more challenging issues for people who are committed to Islam because not all Muslims are easy to deal with. Not all Muslims speak about Islam in a way that is concordant with what I understand to be the will of Allah's communicated by the revelation of Allah. And so sometimes when you read the narrations from Ahlul Bayt, peace be upon them, especially translated through Ahlul Bayt, um, it can be inspiring and remind you of why you're here in the first place and what you're doing this for in the first place. That's Otherwise, so the world can become very confusing and many people become confused. So may true. Allah keep us from being among them. Inshallah. There's some um, books that I've read from Catholic um, priests who've done extensive research on the lives of Sayyidah Fatima mm -hmm. and Sayyidah Zainab, and I believe they're still writing books on it. Um, and it's so inspiring because it's moments like that where you mm -hmm. realize that actually there's this non-Muslim who's so in love with the, whatever you want to call it is what the Ahlul represented, whether it's truth, whether it's, you know, that integrity, whether it's that loyalty, it's these moral characteristics. But they've dedicated their lives to understanding these women in ways that I think I wouldn't even compare to, you know. And it's I think it's moments like that where you think, like the non-Muslims who are there even on the day of Ashura, and like you, you have people from other sects even who look at, at the 10 days of Muharram and think, you know, the message of Imam Hussein is something that we, which shouldn't be constrained to just us. Absolutely. That's what I'm trying to say. And I think when you look at the inspiration it has to other communities, it teaches you how vast that ocean is, that the, the different ways that you can approach it and the, understand it, it's just infinite. Mashallah. One thing you pointed out about the uh, Catholic priests, uh, Catholic priests, um, I also think it's amazing that we that the message of Imam Hussein has been so strong that people from um, other religions look into it. But what I respect about that is that they go a step further after their research and they put it into action. Hmm. So I'm sure you've uh, seen the pictures uh, where the priests actually attended the Arba'in walk to Karbala and. That's also something that I can, I, I feel I should learn from. Sometimes um, as individuals, at least personally speaking, I come across an idea, I agree with it, I support it. But um, after, after thinking about it down the line, I feel like, well, my actions, my actions didn't reflect that mm -hmm. I had learned that. And I think that's an important thing that we can also learn from Imam Hussein is that perhaps belief by itself is not always enough. We True. need to take it a step further. Yes. We need to implement it in our daily lives. Um, we need our actions to speak louder than words. Well, definitely there are Christians, including Catholics, who look to their theology uh, as inspiration and guidance for uh, working together to uplift the human condition and especially to be united with people who are suffering and disenfranchised and disempowered uh, and to to understand that this is not the will of God to have this sort of um, intense stratification in the world and definitely to put it into action. Yeah, that's a very good conclusion. Thank you. Thank you again for your time. Um, I've been honored, as always, Likewise. and thank you, thank uh, you. Sister Likewise. Sarah. Thank Inshallah, you. I will um, have the pleasure of seeing you again soon. Thank, thank you. you.